Hello everyone. In this video, I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience and knowledge about data backup, recovery, and whenever you have some major virus issues, how to protect yourself and how to be a little bit careful when you're doing these things. Now, whatever information I'm giving is for educational purpose. Uh, you want to take precaution when you are opening a computer. You want to make sure that you unplug the powers and you know what you're doing because things can go bad and I don't want to be responsible when something happens. But I'm hoping that these things will help you to understand how things work and you can try to do this. Uh, you can try to, if you wanted to practice something, get an old computer or a laptop and you can try to open things up and that's the best way to learn before you try to do something on your own computer. So the first thing I want to talk about is data backup. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have some kind of an external hard drive that you can use to back up your information. So these external hard drives, they come in two different sizes. One is these types which are like ex which connect to your desktop most of the time but they're a little bigger and then these ones which are a little bit thinner so they are portable you can carry it with you you can buy these from fifty dollars to hundred dollars they come in capacity of five hundred gigabytes to one thousand gigabytes and now they even go to two thousand gigabytes which is known as two terabytes and one terabyte so they're not really too expensive you want to have those things and a lot of these hard drives they come with a special program that will allow you to automate your backup so you can set it up and say that once a day or once a week at this day and this time back up these 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 folders automatically so it will keep checking and it will back up at that time you just need to have your computer on and running so that it can do the backup if you already have some kind of a backup hard drive and you don't have a software you can try to look for a program called Google uh, GoodSync. Just Google the word GoodSync and you'll find their website and you'll find a lot of other programs which will allow you to do that. Okay. So it's very important that try to get a backup and you'll find that a lot of small stores that sell these too so it's, and they're not expensive and it's worth it because when something happens to your computer your data is the most important thing you really do not care too much about the computer because you can get a new computer nowadays in Canada here in Toronto a desktop computer you can get a pretty good one from two hundred to three hundred dollars even a laptop for three hundred to four hundred dollars you don't need to spend too much money okay. And in the data backup, there is another option that is known as network access storage. It's called NAS, N-A-S. What these guys do, these are also for backup, but they attach to your router. And so if you had two to three computers in the house, they all could back up in one place. And also with these devices, you can put your music in one place, your videos, and you can access it from different places, even from your smartphones like iPhones and things like that. A lot of these uh, things, uh, hard drives, they have that feature. Uh, this is one that I have the pictures from iOmega. I have uh, personally used and I was very impressed by the software and how easy it was. But you'll find that a lot of companies that do that, this is one of the growing trends where people try to put everything in one place. And if you had those smart TVs, you can even try to connect those smart TVs to this so you can watch all your movies that you have on there. And you can also remotely log into this from anywhere in the world. You will need to configure your router and there's a few settings you need to do and, and they will help you with that. And then you also need to know your IP address because you get it from your internet service provider. In some cases, they tend to change constantly. So you just need to know what it is. So if you are away and you realize you needed to get access to a file or a video, you could log into it from anywhere in the world and you can access this. Okay. And sometimes these... Uh, network access storage they just come with the box and you have to buy the hard drive separately and sometimes they come with a hard drive and sometimes when you get the box they have options where you can have multiple hard drives in it so that's for redundancy so you can have backups of a backup 
So if you felt that your import information was very important, you might as well do that. It will cost you a little bit more money initially, but it's worth it to have extra copies of your important stuff. So network access storage are a good option too. They roughly go from $120 to and up. I'll just show you quickly. Just have something here. This was the one I had used, the iOmega 1 terabyte which is a thousand gig and it's out of stock right now and I remember this was around like hundred and ten two hundred and twenty dollars but uh, you'll find that there are other ones around that you can look at uh, this is I'm looking at tigerdirect.ca so that's an option so this is also a good thing to do if you didn't want to have an external hard drive for all your computers the next uh, option is to use the cloud services. You might have heard about the word cloud services, which is when your information is stored on the internet. So whatever you files you wanted, you could keep a copy on your computer and also a copy on the internet that you can access from anywhere. Most of these services, they give you limited capacity and a lot of time you have to pay money for it like box.net or mozi.com they all have various plans where you could get like 50 gig for six dollars a month or something like that uh, there are companies like dropbox.com which start you with two gigabytes uh, and then as you refer more people to them they keep on adding more uh, the thing with dropbox is you have to have all your files in one folder and everything in that folder is synced to Dropbox and you can sync it across multiple devices so if I make a change on this computer all the other computers will have that updated file so I don't need to worry about moving the files around Google has a new thing called Google Drive which is giving you 5 gig and the same thing applies you can even put all your documents and you can even install their program called Google Drive on your computer and that will let you sync files from your PC to the Google Drive which is a cloud service. Microsoft has a thing called SkyDrive which is through Hotmail and they also have a thing called Windows Live Mesh which you can install on your Microsoft Windows computer and in some, some places it's kind of weird how that works you can get from 5 to 25 gig uh, of space and with the Windows Live Mesh I like it because you can choose which folders on your computer you need to sync so it's really amazing what I try to do is I take all my important business related or whatever documents I have and those I sync it to my cloud services I not only have an external hard drive where I make a copy but I also make a copy of all the important ones on the cloud because it is limited in capacity so if something happened I'll have access to it from anywhere in the world so and with the new Windows 8 computers uh, it has a very good integration with SkyDrive and it's I believe it's coming with 25 gig of free hard drive space online on Microsoft's SkyDrive so very good way to get yourself going on this the next I want to talk about data recovery so when your computer doesn't work something happened there was a bad electric storm and that's why it's a good investment to invest in a nice um, power bars so that when there is a surge it will protect you for your computer and so in some cases the computer may not boot up what you can do is for your computers is you can remove the hard drives from it so here you need to be careful make sure you unplug the power and then you need the screwdrivers to unscrew it um, with both desktop and the laptop it's fairly easy to get to your hard drive you can even look at online to the manufacturers website and they'll tell you how to get access to those hard drives to remove it uh, with laptops usually in the back side you remove a few screws and you can then snap it out same thing with the desktop you have to open a few screw and then some more inside and then you can get access to it so once you remove the external hard drive from there you can get an external hard drive enclosure so this one here this is for a desktop and this one is for a laptop because they come in different sizes if you're not sure just take the hard drive with you get the technical people to find you one and what happens with these two is like once you put your hard drive in it the other end is a USB connection you connect it to your computer now this is like an external hard drive and you will be able to access all of your files now there are certain types of problems where when you connect this to your 
another computer a new one or a different one it may not recognize now those type of problems are a little tough to solve that's where you'll find that you have to go to a professional and you can look around there's more stuff to do in it but if you do this at least if your hard drive is getting recognized you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars to get your information out because this is where the money is and uh, some places will charge you a thousand dollars to get one gig of data out of your computer and sometimes it is all they are doing is attaching it to an enclosure or you can even get these things which are cables so without the enclosures you can get these cables they come with different ends for hard drives for desktops and laptops you connect it to it there's a power for it and you un connect the USB to your computer now you can move all your important information from your old hard drive to the new computer which is working so this is a really good tip that you can use just be careful when you're opening the computer and if you don't know find someone who can open it for you at least get the hard drive out and then the enclosure part you might find it very reasonably easy to do and again this enclosure once you get it this acts like an external hard drive so you don't have to buy one and you can keep using it if they are in good shape so this is the data recovery part as I said if the hard drives don't get recognized that's a completely different problem the last thing is viruses so sometimes you get some viruses and you cannot remove them the antivirus won't even work because a lot of these viruses are really smart and they will stop the antivirus from working or they hide themselves in such a way under some programs that the viruses cannot find it so what you might want to do sometimes is when you boot your computer start tapping the F8 key on the keyboard like on the top where you have the F1, F2, F3 start tapping F8 it will come up with the menu which is asking you to boot in a safe mode so you can either choose the safe mode or you can choose safe mode with networking with networking means that you will have internet connection in case you wanted to download something or you want to update your antivirus definitions you know the updates to get from for your antivirus for this you will need to be connected to your router or to your internet with a wire it will not work well wirelessly so when it boots in the safe mode you may be able to run your antivirus and it will be able to find the viruses you can also install a program called Malwarebytes. You can Google it. Um, it's a free one. And you can have this along with your antivirus. You do not want to have two different antivirus programs, but Malwarebytes is not actually an antivirus. It was a malware detection. So you can have this part of your program. And there's a free version of it. Just use the free one. Whenever you have a problem, you run it, update it and check it for issues malware bytes can do a good job in finding some things when the virus scans don't and you can even install this during the safe mode so you can run it let it check it and it will try to find it so when you are installing malware bytes be careful at the end it will ask you a question do you want to use the free one or you want to start a free trial just use the free option you really don't need the trial and then they'll ask you to pay them money now if this doesn't work you can get what is known as boot CD so what these do is it will boot your computer into that CD rather than the Windows operating system and then you can run a scan because that way it will be able to find everything now one of the really good one is called Kaspersky boot CD so I'll just show you here I'm just gonna go to Google and type Kaspersky boot CD and most probably the first is called the rescue disk you can even type that Kaspersky rescue disk click it you have to download this program on your computer so you need to have a working computer for this and then you burn it to a CD or a DVD what this disk does it it boots into Linux and then from there they have a link that will allow you to start their antivirus program download the updates so it's good to have an internet connection at that time and it will try to find the problems and I've had a really good success with this and uh, and it will this will do the other good thing with this is when your computer you cannot boot into you can actually use the boot CD to boot into the Linux now you can attach an external hard drive to your computer and you can move all your important file from your 
computer that is not working well to an external hard drive so that way you can save your stuff before you try to do anything else so it's always good to save all your important stuff before you do anything with this so this is a really good tool you can download this it's a free tool and uh, it it doesn't doesn't matter whether you have Kaspersky on your computer right now or not this will do the job even Microsoft has a thing called a mal malicious software removable tool and there's the download link there on the bottom you can google that and it will also try to find it but the Kaspersky is most probably is going to take care of the problem if nothing else works in Microsoft Windows uh, when you boot up and you think you need to press F8 you can try to boot a previously good version of Windows and there's an option called Windows Restore but this will only work if you've activated Windows Restore and if this is not there the final thing to do is what is called a factory restore what factory restore does is it sets your computer back to the way it was the day you got it that means you're gonna lose all your personal files and all the programs that you have installed in the computer since you got it so Microsoft Office any other programs you have all your pictures and music and everything will be gone so it's important to back up everything before you do this last step and the way the factory restore works is that you just need to google and find out what key you need to press so when your computer boots up sometimes it might be F10 key sometimes F12 sometimes it might be a combination when you press it it will go into what's called a factory restore and then you just it will ask you a few questions and you go through it sometimes it may not work from it because that factory restore may have been removed from your computer so then you need to look around and you may have burned the CD or a couple of DVDs for factory restore you put those CDs in the computer boot your computer and it will boot into factory restore and it will step you to the process but remember this will wipe out everything in your computer so if nothing worked this will really clean up your computer of all the viruses and any problems you might be having with the computer sometimes you might find that when you're trying to boot the CD like Kaspersky or the factory restore it is not booting to the CD it is trying to go to the computer right away for that you have to go into the BIOS and then tell the BIOS that try to boot my first boot option should be my CD and then try to boot to the hard drive in many computers when you try to boot the computer you can press F12 which will give you the boot options and then you can use the arrow keys to decide whether you want to boot the CD or do you want to boot to the hard drive hard drive is what you already been doing so you want to boot it to the CD so these are the ways you can work through it Thank you for watching. Hope this was useful.